Hello everyone and welcome to another video tutorial. Today we're going to use Looker Studio to create a website report from scratch. What do we need to get started? Before we go there, please subscribe and like the video. It helps me tremendously to create more content. And let's go straight to the point. So obviously we need to go to lookerstudio.google.com. This is the starting point. What used to be called Data Studio is now called Looker Studio. The next thing we need to do is we need to click here on blank report. We're going to start from scratch and we're going to create a complete website report together. So once you click on blank report, if this is the first time that you are doing this with Looker Studio, you will need to basically provide some of your business details. If it's not, we're going to come to this screen and now we need to connect a data source. So what this means is we need to click here on Google Analytics. So we're going to click here on Google Analytics. And the next thing is on the left hand side, I want you to select your Google Analytics for account. Right. So I'm going to click here and select my Google Analytics for account on my personal website. I'm going to use it as a guinea pig. And then all the way down on the right, we're going to click on add. And this is going to establish the connection between my website in this case and Looker Studio. So now how can we begin? Let me actually delete here all the elements and get started from scratch. Now Looker Studio works in a very, very simple way. On the top, you have this button that is called insert. You click on it and you can insert elements in your report. Once you insert an element, and I'm going to start with a humble rectangle that is going to be here, the header of my report. Then you can go on the right hand side and you can customize this element. You can customize the style and also later on you will see the data that we're going to include in this report. So we are going to maybe make a header that is, let's say, white. And just to understand how it works, we're going to click here on insert. We are going to select some text. I'm going to type it here and I'm going to type some text like test website report. And we are going to go again on the right hand side. We are going to make the letters bigger, maybe let's say 32 and maybe green here. And we're going to align them in the middle, right? So that's how easy it is to add elements in your report. Now let's go and do something meaningful, right? So let's start creating the report in order to have a report that makes sense, you need to start with your top level performance and you need to follow what we call the customer journey. So click here on insert and add a scorecard. So scorecard is basically here. A scorecard means a single metric. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate this control C, control V or command C, command V for those of you who use Mac. And I'm going to actually have four of those scorecards. And now what we're going to do is we are going to select the metrics that we want to showcase here, the top level website performance, right? So I'm going to click on the first scorecard. I'm going to go all the way here on the right, and I'm going to select the metric sessions, for example, traffic on the site. We're going to start with that. Then we're going to click on the second scorecard, and I'm going to select, let's say, another metric here. Let's go with, for example, engage sessions. And then I'm going to click here on views. And from there, my advice is to report on soft KPIs, for example, add to carts, checkouts, visits on key pages. This is going to be found under event count. And then the last metric here is going to be conversions, right? So conversions for you is going to be maybe a sale, a form completion, a hard KPI, something that matters. So long story short, we go from traffic to let's say some qualitative metric you can use here engage session or maybe time on site or something equivalent and then you go to soft kpis then to hard kpis what i'm going to do next is i'm going to grab all these metrics and i'm going to go on the right hand side here that says comparison date range and i'm going to click on compare with previous period so once again you click here you click here and then you say compare with previous period. So now you can see some indicators. So these indicators, basically what they do is they compare the performance of these current date range 
to the previous period. So if you are looking at a monthly report, they compare with the previous month. If you are looking at a weekly report, they compare with the previous week. Now you will say, where is the date range? That's what we're going to do next. We're going to click on insert. We're going to scroll down and add a date range control. I'm going to add it here. And now with this date range control, I can click and I can select, for example, this year to date. And you can see that the date are going to refresh. So now we have a report that is actually going to be reusable, right? So I don't need to create reports on Excel or PowerPoint. I can just change the dates and I can see the different numbers on my report. Now, what I want you to do next is I want you to click here on insert and I want you to add a combo chart here. And now with this combo chart, we're going to go on the right hand side. We're going to select the dimension as the month. We are going to select here the session sessions as a metric and we're going to sort this by month on an ascending order so i want to sort basically my performance by month on an ascending order so january february march april and if you want to customize your report even further you can actually go on the right click on style and you can say i want to show up to 12 columns because we have 12 months of the year and maybe we're going to change the color of the columns and maybe we're going to click here on show data labels also to show the numbers. So this is the trend line of your traffic. I want you to duplicate this two more times. So I'm going to copy paste this two more times. And I'm going to follow basically the pattern of my customer journey. So what this means is the middle graph here, we're going to go to the setup. And instead of sessions, we are going to report of song KPIs, events. and the last graph here, we're going to report on conversions. So why we do this is because we want to understand the trend line, basically, right? So we want to see how much traffic is coming on our website by month, or maybe you can say by week, for example, if you don't want to report, let's say, by month, how many people take key actions on our website every month, and how many people convert every month for example or week so i want to see the trend lines to be able to understand here the flow of how people move from one step to the next in my customer journey so i have my top level performance and i have my trend lines the next thing we're going to do now is we're going to go and insert here again some pie charts so what are we going to do with these pie charts we're going to create a top level website report so first of all i added this pie chart I'm going to go here all the way on the top and I'm going to change this to a donut chart because I like the shape better. And next, what we're going to do is we're going to change the dimension <coughs> to channels, session default channel group. So this pie chart now tells me that 47% of all the traffic comes directly, 34% comes organically, and subsequently we have referral traffic and some other Panels here that drive traffic on my site. And I'm going to duplicate it again two times. And now I'm going to have three pie charts following the customer journey. And the logic basically here is you want to understand what are the channels that are driving traffic. So the first pie chart is going to be sessions and where they're coming from. The second pie chart here we're going to select and we're going to change this metric to soft KPIs, maybe an event count. And then the third pie chart, I'm going to change it to conversions. And here, basically, I'm going to be able to understand now where the traffic is coming from percentage-wise, which channels are driving soft KPIs, they are actually driving key actions, and which channels are converting as a percentage. And here, you can actually look at these pie charts and try to understand which channels are moving the needle maybe proportionally even more than the traffic that they generate and which channels are not moving the needle so you have basically two uh, scenarios here channels that drive a lot of traffic but they don't drive a lot of key actions and conversions and channels that drive let's say very little traffic but proportionally they give you a lot of key actions and conversions so you want to understand this at a glance now what we're going to do is we run out of space right so here my report actually doesn't have any more space. So we're going to scroll the way up, click on page, click on current page settings, click on style, and 
then what we're going to do is go to height here and type 3000 and now here we have a lot more space 3000 pixels to play with because we need to add a couple more things in this report what do we need to add again here i'm going to click on insert all the way on the top left and then i'm going to add a table so this table is going to be my channel performance maybe top level channel performance so i'm going to make this table big and i'm going to go here on the right hand side on the dimension make sure the dimension is session default channel group and here i'm going to add basically all the metrics that matter for example sessions and gate sessions the metrics that matter for you obviously event counts for example and conversions i'm going to show you later on how to actually narrow down the event count using a filter to a specific action so stay tuned watch the whole video if you want to find out so now i have this table with the table what i like to do is it is very hard actually to understand what is going on meaning find some insights so i like to click here on chart on the top right and convert it select the third option which is a heat map so now we have a heat map and a couple of little tricks if we are to call them like that scroll all the way down and click here on show summary row so now you have basically here the the aggregation of all the metrics and one more thing that is really interesting and important you scroll all the way down and where it says comparison date range you click here you click on none and you say previous period and with this you are going to create here the delta column so the delta column means now you are looking at this year to date and you have this delta column that tells you whether let's say traffic went up or down percentage wise same thing for engage sessions same thing for my events same thing for my conversions so now i have almost a complete report we're going to add a couple more things top level performance trend line following the customer journey traffic soft kpis hard kpis channel contribution to traffic soft kpis and hard kpis and a table that shows the performance of every channels that the top level performance the default channel grouping if you want now what you can do is you can duplicate this table and if it's important for you you can actually create a table that is going to show you now the pages that receive traffic on your site so you're going to come here click on dimension type in page and then select full page url select the metrics again that matter for you perhaps here we need to change engage sessions with views which is the equivalent of what used to be paid views and now we have here a page report right now if you want you can also add maybe a little bit of let's say some labels or some text actually to understand or maybe for third parties to understand what every table is showcasing and what everything is all about so let me actually do that to understand what i mean so i'm going to add some text basically here and i'm going to say this is my page performance breakdown now obviously you can create a report that is more beautiful than what i'm doing here but i'm just giving you an example so let's make it bold and this is let's say the label of this table and then you can do the same thing with let's say this other table here so we're going to duplicate this text we're going to scroll up and this is the label here of this is the channel performance breakdown perhaps we need to leave some more space basically here but i think everything looks good so this is my channel performance breakdown this is my page performance breakdown and maybe i can make this table bigger so I can actually see all the pages and how they are performing on my website. And that's fundamentally the top level website report through Looker Studio. Couple of things now as a bonus. You can click here on insert. You can go and add an image. And I'm going to add my logo here. So we added an image. We go on the right hand side. We click select file then we're going to go basically and find here my image so let me see now where is uh where i have my 
my logo, maybe into design logo. And let's actually add this logo here. So now I have my logo actually that I added in this report. And one more thing that I promised for last. Now, if you want the event count to, to let's say, report on a specific event and not all the events, then what you need to do, first of all, is you need to understand which event, let's say, you want to report on. So let me actually go to my Google Analytics and find basically an event that we're going to use as a guinea pig for this uh, exercise. So let me remind myself of the name of my events under uh, this website. So, okay, let's see what are the events actually here that we have under my, my website so we can create an example. So let's actually say that we want to, to report only on clicks on book training. And when it comes to conversions, maybe we want to report only on, let's say, hire me for training. So what we're going to do is we're going to click here on event count, maybe here on the scorecard first. We're going to scroll down and click on add the filter. And we're going to say, so this is clicks to book training. So I'm going to say to the system, this scorecard is not going to report on all the soft KPIs. It's going to report only on the event name that contains, let me remind myself what is the name basically here of my event that contains clicks on, let's say, book training. So I'm going to say basically here contains clicks on book training. You don't need to actually give the whole name if you say contains. So I'm going to save. And another trick now is you can click on the little pen next to event count and you can label this. Instead of event count, you can say this is clicks to book training, for example. Okay, and now we can actually apply the same filter to our graph here, basically, right? So we can come here and we can actually click on other filter and we can say this is clicks to book training and we can go and specify exactly, for example, same thing for the pie chart. We can actually report on a specific action instead of actually reporting on all the soft KPIs. That's it. That's how you can create a website report through Looker Studio. If you learned something new, please subscribe to the channel and like the video. Have a great day in any time zone and see you in the next one.